By this point, we've all heard that the solar tax credit is under fire thanks to the House's new budget reconciliation bill. But what does this actually mean? What's being affected? And what is the effect going to be on payback periods for homeowners who are maybe looking to go solar in a post-tax credit world? Well, I ran the numbers, so you don't have to. So let me explain. The U.S. government is looking to get rid of the federal solar tax credit. Well, how will that affect homeowners and the payback period that they see when they're still looking to go solar after this is gone? Well, let's take a look. Now, what's being proposed here is that the federal tax credit, which is 30% of the total cost for residential solar and storage installations, is going to be going away in the new budget reconciliation bill. As of right now, the House of Representatives has passed their version, but the Senate is still debating it. So this bill very well may change from the time of recording. Now, the tax credit applies to both solar panels and energy storage, so losing this could be a pretty significant blow to any homeowner looking to go solar. Now, there are two versions of the tax credit actually available. There's Section 25D, which is the one used by homeowners who purchase their solar via cash or loan. This bill ends that credit after December 31st, 2025. So if your system's installed in January, you get no credit for anything that you would install. There's also Section 48E, which is the version that's used by solar lease and PPA companies when they claim the credit for their business for systems they install. The bill includes a 60-day amendment, which would eliminate this credit for any project that does not begin construction within 60 days of the bill being signed into law. So this bill very well may kill the solar PPA and lease market because they just can't install their systems in time. So would have a pretty big impact on the U.S. market because there is a ton of solar that's been growing. Sia and Wood McKenzie note that as of 2024, 84% of newly added generating capacity came from solar and storage. And that number has been steadily growing over the last decade and more. Looking forward then, solar PV and batteries make up 75% of the U.S. generators that are under development. So there is a ton of new development that is at stake here that could no longer go through because of tax credit. So what does this mean for a homeowner who's looking to go solar? Well, we ran some numbers so we can actually show you what that payback period looks like. We're going to look at the payback period, which is the time it takes for solar to recoup its investment cost. That way it completely pays for itself. Now, we ran a system design with a few parameters in it. The system we're looking at is going to be 8 kilowatts in size and produce roughly 10,000 kilowatt hours per year. For the purposes of this, we're going to assume that that energy is 100% consumed by the home. The electric rate for this is going to be set at 17.3 cents per kilowatt hour, which matches the U.S. average electric rate as of 2024. It also is going to increase by 2.89% per year, which matches the U.S. average increase over the last 10 years. Panel degradation is also going to be factored into account here, and it's going to be set at a quarter percent to match some of the high-end panels that are really popular out in the market today. When you look at that payback with and without the ITC, for a system without battery storage, both of them start at that same investment, but you get that bump from that 30% tax credit. Now, the system with the ITC would pay for itself in about 10 years, and the system without the ITC is going to pay for itself in about 13 because it doesn't get that immediate boost from that federal tax credit. So that payback period is definitely pushed back, but there is still, as you can see, a ton of value over the entire lifetime. When you look at a system that's similar with battery storage, that initial increase in cost is much higher because you did have to add battery storage to this. And then with an ITC, that system should pay for itself in about 13 years. Without that federal tax credit, though, that system would pay for itself in about 18 years. So the overall effect here is that solar paybacks will be pushed back, and solar is overall going to be less accessible to the masses. But solar overall is still a cheaper form of energy and still makes sense as an investment for homeowners. So while this will have an impact on the U.S. solar market, it's not going anywhere. Thanks for watching. Make sure you subscribe to the Solar Insure YouTube channel. Stay tuned here for any new changes coming about the solar tax credit and for more videos about information on solar industry.